I have now played something like 80 hours of this game, maybe 75, it's hard to account for all the times I wandered away from my PC and forgot to go back and just found out a few hours later that it was in fact still running. So, <laughs> uh, I can't even check in here, I think I have to check on the, uh, the main screen. So I have currently... Uh, you know what, I'm just going to come out and say this right at the start, this is going to be spoiler filled if you care about spoilers for Elden Ring, I'm 80 hours into it, so I will probably have things to say that you won't want to hear, and uh, will probably show things that you don't want to see. Which, I mean, that happens on most of my streams, I suppose. Anyway, so this is the world map that I've uncovered so far, in case you were wondering. This is the starting region, which I already thought was massive. Uh, I've done everything but the final boss of this place and some stuff with dragons, because they're bullshit and I hate to fight them. Pretty much cleared out this area, this area, which is the second main area of the game, and now I'm up here, which is supposed to be the third main area of the game, it's just that I went to Kaelid early and had a horrible time for, you know, 20 hours. And I'm currently fiddling around with Mount Gelmir. Basically all of these sites that I've uncovered is me trying to search for this specifically, which is the map of the region. Everything I've found has been by accident while trying to find my way up. So, you know... That's a thing. In case anyone is wondering, my map markers are a little man for an NPC. A little skull for either a boss in the open world that I don't want to fight right now, or a uh, dungeon that I can't be bothered to complete right now. Mostly the dungeon ones are hero's graves because they're just bullshit and I hate them. The little chest is a trader and the little banner is a... Well, they're sort of like... They're not, like, marked sites on the game world, but there are these monuments with scraps of story information on them, so I've marked those so I can keep track of them. I started out playing a sorcerer build. I still have a lot of sorcery stuff going on. However, I have not been doing so much sorcery lately. I've mostly just been doing absolute shit tons of sword combat. Uh, in fact, I gave up on holding a shield, even, quite recently, just because I realised I wasn't using it. I realised I was just focusing on dodging instead of using it anyway except against certain very specific enemies, and I just wanted to save the weight and have more equipment instead. I mean, magic is OP in most FromSoft games that have magic, which I guess is just souls, really. Um, and now Elden Ring. But yeah, Sorcerer was always the Dark Souls easy mode, which is why I tend to play a new FromSoft game as a Sorcerer. But um, I actually had a lot more success <laughs> giving up on the magic and uh, doing melee strats instead. Also, I left a one very helpful message, so I get a lot of little pings popping up. Popping up. My, uh, one of my closest friends has been playing through at roughly, well, not roughly the same speed, but sort of a, a similar sort of rate, and actually respect into going Faith, because apparently they've completely changed Faith for this, this instalment of the franchise. Not that this is a Dark Souls game. I will consistently, mistakenly call it a Souls. It's not. It's a completely different thing. And uh, anyone who says otherwise has failed. Well, reading comprehension is not the word, but, you know. But that's my, my usual complaint and soapbox that I climb up on top of every time I'm doing streaming or anything like that. But, yeah. This is the non-Souls game that is closest to Souls. It's more like Souls than Bloodborne is. It's way more like Souls than Sekiro is because I think Bloodborne and Souls are consistently part of the same genre, whereas Sekiro is just a completely different thing. Uh, I've been relying on sword combat a lot, but whenever there's something I can't be bothered to fight properly with a sword, it's time for this, which is kind of OP, you are quite right. But yeah, so apparently the faith stuff is a lot more advanced in this and a lot more interesting because of it. And I certainly have seen a lot of faith spells that I would have liked to have tried out, but I can't because I committed to Sorcerer and I don't have the faith for it. I guess I just have to faith facts. There we go, first pun of the stream. Um, I don't actually have that much intelligence. I think I've got about 30 at the moment. Because um, I've spread a lot of other stat points around. A problem I had early on uh, is that I kept running into things that would kill me in one hit. 
so I, I put a ton of points into into uh, into hit points early on, and um, then I realised that I was still dying in one hit, and so I uh, decided to no longer commit to my you know soul from soft tradition of always going for dodge strats. I'm currently leveled something, level seventy eight. As you can see, I have a really garbage spread of stats. I'm not. I'm. I've never been good at the the stats game in Dark Souls or in FromSoft games generally. I've always just relied on being good enough at the game that I can get by with whatever my stats happen to be. Um. So, yeah, I've actually been thinking about respecking because there is a, a respec option once you reach a certain point in the plot. But haven't done it yet because I don't know enough about the stats system really. But yeah, so I've spread my stats around quite a lot, both because of that early on, and what I realised was, okay, so I've put all of these points into hit points, I'm wearing a hit point boosting hat, and in addition to that, I'm also going to try wearing a ton of armour. So I just put on a ton of armour, as much as I could wear while still having medium rolls, and I still would die in one hit. And I think that dying in one hit breaks the soul's formula and takes what is a challenging but fun experience into the realm of outright frustrating. Um, the kind of ideal Souls experience is surviving a hit with, you know, two hit points left and panicking and fleeing and um, frantically healing up and or dodge rolling through your three hit combo, but Souls' bosses are punishing, but they're fair. And I think that when you have a punishing fight where any mistake equals instant full instantaneous death and you have to therefore be successful in that margin literally 200 times in a row in, uh, over the course of like a 20 minute fight. I think that's bad. I think that breaks what was fun about souls and breaks how it works. Oops. That was a spider, you know. Also, in case anyone is wondering, I do know about the... Um, lantern item that you can use to shed light but its light radius is a lot smaller than the starlight spell so I prefer to just use starlight because I hate not being able to see very far in the dark. But yeah I've been I've been having reasonable success now mostly just fighting bosses with my sword which is an int scaling sword because I kind of have to because I've got so much intelligence. I, I've been enjoying having essentially the um kind of oh the uh, the giant bow do you want to know exactly where in the game I, if I found it because I can show you um, over here in Caria Manor there is a boss fight with a cool knight and she drops it if I remember correctly I mean a lot of the cool things you find in this game you get from what could reasonably be cool. <laughs> oh the starlight spell um, I think that the, just the basic sorcery trainers will sell it. Uh, which would be Selen, who is in a hole in the ground over in Lingrave. A hole in the ground in this village, Waypoint Ruins. And um, I think that possibly the, the other sorcery trainer sells it as well, but I can't remember. Alright. Time to see what terrible thing I have to deal with down here. Another demi-human queen. One of the major downsides, I think, of Elden Ring's open world structure, as opposed to Dark Souls' very, very strictly, carefully designed structure, is that you get a lot of repeated bosses. I've run into very few bosses that I haven't fought ten of so far. Um, which is a problem for a lot of reasons, one of which is that it gets boring, another of which is that my main criticism of kind of open world games is that there's just the same stuff over and over and over and if you look at the, the world map it's kind of just like a big list of things to do, but they're all ultimately the same and they all feel a bit samey. The last thing I want from a Souls game, or from a FromSoft game, is for it to feel like it's ultimately quite samey and the same, and that's a real tragedy that that's what's happened in this one. There's kind of a feeling I get whenever I play what I call a map clearing game, which is, hey Lisa, which is uh, 
any kind of open world game that has you know a big list of icons on the world map and you sort of just run around tidying up the icons and they're all ultimately kind of ultimately just the same sort of stuff that you're doing at each set uh you know it's time for gameplay activity number one and you fight the same six guys you've been fighting every other time you've done gameplay activity number one Every time that happens, it's just disappointing to me. I don't I don't play many of those games, and I think that they have become really overrepresented in the industry at the moment. It's kind of the what dull brown first person shooters were to 2006, an open world game with towers that show you, you know, 40 icons each of five different types, and you go around and you do all the things. Hard to now. <laughs> And I've enjoyed plenty of those, but, but they do ultimately have this problem of not having bespoke design throughout, and it's it's boring, and I don't like it. <laughs> and um, my big fear with Elden Ring was that it would ultimately be the same, and ultimately it is the same. It takes longer for you to start to see the pattern, but once you start seeing the pattern, it's there, and it's extremely obvious. These guys are too short for me to hit with magic. I'll probably be silent whenever I'm focusing on something. Getting mobbed by things is usually how I die if I'm not paying attention. But um, I do want people to just randomly ask me any questions they happen to have. Which maybe I should have put in the stream description or something. I think there's a further way up here. I think there's a way to get up on top of this mound, but I'm not really sure yet. So today I have pretty much only today I have been exploring Mount Gelmir. I have not been to this region before, I don't think. Oh, I've just realised there's a bunch of tough guys here. Except they're not that tough, but... They are, um... Victims of the madness, I guess. You know, that, uh... New metal band, or whatever they were. From the mid-2000s. But yeah, every time I go in a cave, I forget that means everyone else outside will have respawned. <laughs> Which is useful for gaining more smithing stones, I suppose, if nothing else. Fun fact, you can swing to the left or to the right when riding on a horse. Or if you know, you happen to get trodden on by a guy you didn't see. Or I guess you tread up on a guy you didn't see, then that's kind of it for you if you're not careful. Or if you back off a cliff while running away from a guy that you didn't see, that's also a way to die. I think I have a... That's actually something like the third time that's happened to me today. It didn't happen to me for something like 40 hours of gameplay. And then three times today I've backed off a cliff. I mean, you say prank hold, but the time I got prank hold was when I uh, got fucking kicked off a cliff by Patches. The interdimensional travelling, you know, asshole who's in every FromSoft game. And I just know that means there's going to be tons of people saying, oh, you see, it's all connected. This takes place in the same world as Dark Souls, but no. Sometimes sometimes people have the same characters reoccur in different things they make. There is just also a Patches in this world, because there is a Patches in every universe. It's just, it's lore. It's, it's L-A-W, not L-O-R-E, to be clear. It's just the way of things. Anyway, he did his old trick, and... I saw, I saw a cool, pretty, shiny, glowy rock, and I was like, oh, what a neat, shiny, glowy rock. I want to follow the rock and see where it goes, and then I found a whole trail of them. And I followed the trail, which led to the edge of a cliff, and when, as soon as I approached the edge of the cliff, boom, cutscene, and he kicks me off the cliff. Because he really does never learn. Actually, I haven't gone back and... I know where he is as an NPC, I haven't gone back and talked to him since he did that. Which I probably should. Also, I should probably just learn not to try and fight these guys on horseback, because I'm really bad at it. That's not the right potion. Well, that's a whole level up's worth of souls down the drain, but who cares? It's not the end of the world. What was the end of the world, and what nearly stopped me playing from this playing this game, was when I was in Kaled, because um, I think that 
Elden Ring has a real problem, at least for me personally, with its difficulty levels. I found 90% of the game too easy, and then very specific parts of the game literally impossible. And um, this came to a head in Kaled, which was frustrating, where there was just everything would kill me in one hit. And as I've said, the kind of the key to the FromSoft formula is that things will kill you in two hits. You know, you get hit by a boss, even if you haven't specced into health or armor or whatever, most Dark Souls bosses will almost kill you in one hit and you'll be left with a tiny sliver of hit points and it's, it's exciting and it, you panic and you, you dodge roll away and then you try and recover and then it kills you with another hit because you panicked. Um, but that the fact that you have that tiny margin for error means that you can actually learn and improve. If a boss always kills you the first time it hits you, then you need to successfully dodge every single attack it sends at you for the entire duration of the fight. And um, it is a lot harder to learn per absolute perfection from step one than to be allowed to make exactly one mistake and having made your one mistake attempt to recover. So that was what I ran into in Kaled. Suddenly everything had this, this zero margin for error issue. But then I was finding most of the other bosses elsewhere in the game I was beating, taking a couple hits. I was mostly, you know, I would complete a dungeon, have three out of six health potions left and then fight a boss and only use one while fighting and it just wasn't very... Oh, motherfucker, it's one of these things. Okay, so these are these are one of the bosses I can't stand. I've never successfully killed one of these. <laughs> I think it's the only boss type in the game that I've never successfully killed one of yet. They have really, really irritating attacks, really irritating hitboxes. Ugh, they just, they suck and I hate them. So I thought this was actually leading where I wanted to go, but apparently not. Although it doesn't seem particularly interested in chasing after me right now. It also seems smaller than the last one I fought, even though this one's called Full Grown. Yeah, Celia Crystal Cave is uh, the last one I fought. That was the last one I seriously tried to fight and I gave up after about attempt 30 when it would just kill me. It has the rare and unusual ability to kill you while you are in recovery frames on the ground, um, which is frustrating when it has the capacity to charge around everywhere. But this is kind of what I'm talking about. There's there's just certain times where you were denied any margin for error and it becomes impossible to learn the boss's attack patterns. And it, it's not until now, you know, 80 hours into the game, that I am actually running into the classic FromSoft experience. Well, with regards to a boss, I mean. Um, once I got to the first uh, legacy dungeon, the big mega dungeons, of which there are a f only a few in the game, um, which is Stormvale Castle, Stormvale Keep, something like that, I found that it felt just like exploring a zone from a Dark Souls game, and I think that there are weaknesses in the open world that I'll probably talk about later on. Um, so that interacts with that in various ways, but specifically the boss experience of, of, of not just Dark Souls, but FromSoft games generally, is that they are almost too much for you to handle, and sometimes they are too much for you to handle. But there is this ability to to learn and figure out what you need to do and improve and develop. Do those that goes up to the same place, right? Um, and that's not actually the point I intended to make when I started that sentence. I had some other thing I was going to say about the difficulties of it, but I don't remember what they were. I think these might be weak to magic, but all of my spells have such long charge up times. I'm gonna try and do this properly, and then probably give up. That said, I do think the boss designs are really lovely. There's a lot of really fun, really original designs for a lot of the bosses, even the ones that I can't fucking stand. This guy, for instance. Oh, I remember what I was saying. Yeah, it wasn't until I until I until I hit like hour forty or whatever, not forty, hour seventy or so, 
that I started to run into bosses that felt like Souls bosses rather than that felt really easy or that felt like um, they were just literally impossible because they would kill me the second I stepped into the arena with one hit. Also, I've done very little summoning of um, humans. Very little. I think I summoned a co-op partner one time. Uh, I actually need a quick break for the bathroom, which is unfortunate considering I just started, so I will be back in two seconds. Which is not the correct number of seconds, but whatever. And I'm back. So for all that I have a lot of criticisms of the way the open world has been implemented and the compromises that has forced the designers to make on the Souls formula, which like normally I'm, I prefer things to change and grow over time, but um, the problem with FromSoft doing that specifically is that they produce a product which Really, only they make. Not very many other studios are out there making FromSoft style games. You know, it's, it's like the Immersive Sim. Very few studios actually make them. <sighs> I forgot all about that again already. Um, which means that if you, if you really like the thing that From Software specifically do, which I do, From Software are kind of the only place to go to get it. And that means that um, them changing the formula in this specific way is is unpleasant to me because it means that the one studio that makes the thing I really like no longer makes the thing I really like and in addition the changes they have chose to make are chosen to make are changes that bring it more in line with the kind of industry standard for a AAA title at the moment which is make it open world and uh, have a whole bunch of repeated identical challenges across the world map in order to pad it out and justify you having a gigantic world map that said, for all my criticisms about the bosses and about the uh, world design, well, I mean the open worldness design, I don't know. Uh, I, do, I am enjoying the cosmology of it. There's a kind of a, let's see, that path travels around to that's, aha, so this is how I get where I want to go. I can simply leave. I do not wish to be in the share zone. Bye. I'll drop a marker on that and come back to it later. <laughs> when I've eventually got the, figured out how to beat these. Most of the boss types I've struggled with, you know, the two or three boss types out of the, like, 15 boss types I've fought, uh, the ones that have actually caused me to struggle, I have mostly beaten a few of now and figured out ways to fight them. It's it's just a couple of them that I'm struggling with, including, including the uh, Star Beasts. But while the, um, while the narrative is not this delightful, beautiful, extremely elaborately woven web which sinks into every single part of the game and its mechanics, um, and is this, you know, elaborate fretwork that you have to figure out and so on, it's, it's still got that in it, but it feels a lot less like 
careful interrelations and more like uh, kind of just a bunch of stuff that's happened and a bunch of people that it's happened to. That said, I'm really enjoying a lot of the detail of those people and their stuffs. So there's many different factions in the game world, or at least in the, the story world, the narrative world. A whole bunch of people doing a whole bunch of things, and they've all got their own ways of looking at the world. And the sort of competing cosmologies are really interesting. I am looking forward to eventually crystallizing an idea in my mind of, you know, what the purpose of the of the Erd Tree is, what the purpose of the Elden Ring was before it broke. FromSoft love to have these themes of kind of a linchpin of reality. Also, let me know if uh, the stream is okay or juddering or like stuttery or terrible or whatever. <laughs> it looked all right in the test stream I did earlier. Ugh, these things are a nightmare. It looked all right in this test stream I did earlier, but you know, it's always a bit different when live. Okay, good. So, it's, hmm. I should probably say what this is. This this is the Volcano Manor of Mount Gelmir, which is delightfully, uh, delightfully blunt of a name for a, for a FromSoft location. I don't know what its deal is, but I received an invitation to go here at some point. Mainly the reason I'm here is because I want that, which is the map piece for this area. So I'm gonna go try, try and grab that. Um, as I mentioned before, almost all of the exploration I've done in this area has been me, been me slowly but surely trying to find my way to where the map is so that I can leave and go continue the exploring the other area I was already exploring before I found this one. Because, I should probably mention, I have realised I am playing this game wrong. It took me quite a long time to realise it, but um, the way that previous FromSoft games have trained me to play FromSoft games is not the way you are meant to play Elden Ring. You are not meant to see every bit of it. You're not meant to scour every corner and explore every single tiny angle to figure out everything and learn everything and see everything. I think you are supposed to be much more of a sort of a random wanderer and just go see what you see and do what you do. Um, and I may have damaged the experience for myself by literally rinsing every zone I've been to. Um, for every tiny scrap of content. I might need to pay attention to this one, actually. I really hate these hands. I was very pleased when I left uh, the place where I fought a bunch of them previously and never thought I would never have to deal with them again, but we cannot be so lucky, unfortunately. can't move my real hands that dexterously. Well, that's me told, I guess. <sighs> you do not, under any circumstances, gotta hand it to him. Anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of enjoying trying to figure out what the deal is with all of these different places and peoples and what their stuff is. Oh yeah, that's what I was talking about, you're quite right. <laughs> um, what I found was less the problem that it made me overpowered. I felt overpowered even when I was doing, you know, other stuff. I There's been very- f the only times I haven't felt overpowered in this game is the like 5% of the time when I run into a challenge I can't beat, like those um, star fallen beasts. Um, because I think this is probably the easiest, on average, of of FromSoft's games. And, um... But yeah, no, like, in order to succeed at every Dark Souls game, and at Sekiro, and presumably at Bloodborne, although I haven't had the chance to play that, you need to explore every inch of it. You need to look around you and figure out what's going on. And that's tied into the story in great detail, you know? Those areas are incredibly carefully designed, very tightly coiled for that purpose. Why are things where they are? How did they get where they are? What does it mean that things are here and not somewhere else? And so on. I haven't played Bloodborne because I don't have a goddamn PS4. Um, I wanted to play Bloodborne, but I've never been able to justify buying a PS4 just to play one game. Um, 
you know, I thought perhaps maybe one day if I, you know, if I got thousands of subscribers, I would be able, and, you know, Patreon patrons, I would be able to afford to get a secondhand PS4 and a copy of Bloodborne just for the sake of playing Bloodborne. But, unfortunately, due to my illnesses constantly cropping up and stopping me from being as prolific as I used to be and always wanted to be, I have sadly uh, not achieved that. So, one day perhaps I will- oh, that's right, these things fucking killed me. At least these ones should be vulnerable to glintstone arc. They're also not as tough, so I can just hit them. Significantly easier to deal with these ones. You do have to hand it to these ones. I did actually get the hang of, of killing the big hands earlier, but um, that was about 30 to 40 hours ago, and it's been a long time. Oh, I think it saw me. It definitely saw me. <laughs> Part of the problem with these ones is that I can't fucking tell their animations apart. I can't tell if it's going to do a big hand swing or scuttle forwards or do whatever horrible ungodly thing it does. And that was the wrong moment to be doing healing. If you can get behind them and hit them in the stump, you can you can chain stagger them. <sighs> Genuinely, I think these might be my second least favorite enemy in the game so far. The last time I had to fight them, I was able to summon spirits to hold aggro while I just went around behind. So can't do that here though. And in case you're wondering what the most hated enemy in this game is to me so far, it is the horrible mutant crows in Kaelid. Almost everything in Kaelid is deeply horrible. It was a very unpleasant place and I hated being there. But um, something about the design of the mutant crows in Kaelid made me actually angry. I've never, I've never had such a strong emotional reaction to a design for a monster in a game. And I don't know why. Every, every aspect of their motion, every single part of the way they were designed and animated made me fucking hate them. I can't explain it. I would just, I would get irrationally furious every time one of them showed up. Something about the condescending way they peck the ground. Something about the extremely fast movements that they have with extremely slow wind-ups. Which is also kind of, like, that's a general difficulty I've had in, in Elden Ring as compared to Dark Souls. Um, because the Dark Souls games have had relatively consistent styles of animation for the, you know, the gap between the wind-up and the swing whenever there's a, whenever there's something attacking you. Whereas, um, in Elden Ring... A lot more things have very slow wind-ups and then very fast swings. Which makes it a lot harder to get the dodge timing if you're used to playing the other games. Is this actually what I've noticed consistently? I'm almost always dodging early. Um, simply because I'm just used to I'm used to a a slower swing and a faster wind-up. There's also a lot more enemies that have um, AoE attacks that can't be dodged out of geographically. You can still always use iframes to dodge through, dodge through an attack, which is invincibility frames for anyone who doesn't know. But... Oh hey, it's one of you. These are marionette soldiers created by the Academy of Raya Lucaria for reasons. But yeah, so actually, yeah, on a more positive note, one of the things I have been enjoying is learning little bits and scraps and stuff and putting ideas together in my head about the way this world works and what it's full of, just like a, just like a Souls game. The flaw there is that, unlike a Souls game, it doesn't feel like part of a cohesive whole. It doesn't feel like there is this consistent web of information that I'm slowly filling out and interpreting and coming up with my own theories about, which was the uh, intentional like design goal of, of Dark Souls originally, that, that players would put things together and make up their own answers to the questions they have. You know, I'm just going to grab this. I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave. <laughs> Can't 
can't stop me now. Because I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. The one weakness, the one weakness these hands have is that if you rest at a bonfire, their positions will reset. I'm a genius. Also, I didn't need to rest there. That was a misclick. The reason for the misclick? I'm actually playing this on a Nintendo Wii controller. Oh, god damn it! Not Nintendo Wii. It's not 2008. Uh, Lord Rikard, if this putrid field of death is what your blasphemy would bring, then I can no longer abide. No one can. So I'm going to assume that uh, Lord Rikard lives somewhere around here, probably in Volcano Manor, but maybe in the spooky poison manor house that I found somewhere else, which is over here. Hello. Hello, acrylic spatter. So I finally got the map to this area. I can finally see what's up. That's the volcano place that I was invited to, suspiciously. I wonder if I've actually missed anything. Did I actually end up exploring this entire region fully before? Oh no, I haven't been to the base of this Erd tree. I'm not sure I actually missed anything else in this entire exploration. That looks accessible from Lindgrave. I'll have to come back to that. Not Lindgrave, from Altus Plateau. Yeah, the ghosts are really nice. I'm not sure how they fit into the cosmology because um, as a... Uh, one of the things I've been enjoying learning about in the cosmology is that everybody has a different opinion of what's going on, as far as I can tell. I really want to figure out how the Erd tree relates to the primordial cru crucible and how they relate to uh, a bunch of guys I'm murdering and how it re all relates to the Elden Ring itself. Oh yeah, that's something I started talking about before. Um, FromSoft... I, or maybe just Miyazaki, I'm not really sure to what extent one can say the studio and to what extent one can say the creative director of the game. But they um, love to have these themes of um, kind of cosmic sins breaking what the linchpin of reality is. Or in Souls, ironically, it's actually the other way around. Someone creating a linchpin to try and hold uh, reality together in a, in a strict form to maintain it in the form that it was already present, rather than allowing it to take the natural course of its, uh... Hey. We're cool? We're cool. That's fine. Um, natural course of its own, of its own universal life cycle, and that's kind of what causes all the problems. In, uh... In Elden Ring, the Erd Tree seems to be a kind of a linchpin of reality in that way, or possibly it is the origin of all life, or possibly the origin of all life is in fact the crucible. Oh, that's, that's interesting. I have never seen one of these before. This is a new enemy type for me to get killed by. What element is that? Is that fire or madness? I think that's madness, which is an element in this game. Oh, no, it's death. Okay. Instant death which was Curse in the Souls games. It's the same mechanic, I think. This thing's kind of beautiful, actually. It reminds me of some statues I saw years ago at the Tate Modern. Um, I'm just going to focus on this for a sec. Oh boy. That's probably not going to be good. Fun fact you may not know about uh, Elden Ring in specific and Dark Souls in particular, I mean in general, is that um, you can actually escape from grabs if you hammer the face buttons or the triggers while you're in a grab. This can save you from getting killed sometimes. Seems like an SCP. Come on, you bastard. Get knocked down. How many jump attacks do you need? I do not wish for another hug, thank you. I'm all, I'm all quite hugged out now. I'm going to name this thing Squiggly James. Squiggly James, who has a poorly tummy. Is 
There we go. Don't worry, I'll uh I'll make you feel all better. Oh shit. There we go, we're alright. It's fine. <laughs> hey Alice, welcome to the, the this. A larval tear. Okay, hang on. Larval tears, those were from something. Larval tear. Substance and living organism. Material quiet required by the egg of Renala. Okay, so that's that's the thing. That's the item that is the consumable that lets you uh, respec at the respecking NPC. But I think it might be connected to the creation of artificial life because I know the Albinorix are an artificial life form created by the sorcerers of Rhea Lucaria. Um, and there's oh come on, really this now. <laughs> so this is a boss type I have killed one of uh, and ignored another one of. I can't remember. Yeah, it was day before yesterday, I think. I'm not sure if I'm st I've still got my dodge timings down. So I'm probably going to have to focus. I wish I could reset my... Uh, I wish I could change my... Uh, my talismans in combat. I really need um, stamina regen for fights like this. Aha! So there's a mechanic that's been kind of present in previous uh, FromSoft games but reinforced in this one. Uh, which is that if you hit something enough, you can break its poise, and if you- oh shit, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, you see, this is it, the, the one-hit kills. Um, these things are less bullshit than the other things. You can generally survive one hit, which is all you need in Souls, but they do have ones that will com completely smash you. I think these are like dead roots of the tree or something, because the first one you find, you find- uh, oh, is Squiggly James back? Or did he... Some enemies go forever, very few, but, um... Well, some non-bosses die forever, but some don't. He was over here, but I don't know if I... don't know if he respawns. Looks like he does not. Goodbye, Squiggly. See, I, I uh... The first one you find, you can find in the basement of the first legacy dungeon and um you know near flat stanley who we will uh who i should probably go back and fight actually that wasn't it uh this and then this in case you're wondering the ground pattern is a really cool spell i found which uh, increases your magic damage pretty significantly if you stand in it. I think, I'm pretty sure that the, the damage boost is enough that it's worth... Uh, if you're only going to get one shot off, it's definitely worth using it. If you uh, are going to get a few shots off, it's worth using it. Like, it's not less uh, efficient than just having another blast of your, your big magic spell. But yeah, um, the first one of these I could probably go back and kill pretty easily now. But it's actually got a really convenient cheesing spot. It should be extremely easy to cheese this, uh, cheese that one to death. Was that the? Yeah, there we go. So the mechanic that previously existed that they brought back is um, being able to stagger bosses to get, or well, any enemy to get a, a big giant bonus damage hit. Nice job dodging that, guys. As anyone who's ever played uh, World of Warcraft seriously knows, you need to not stand in the fire, even if it is in fact the cleansing divine flame of gold endemic to the uh, Erd tree. 
I think. Pads, come on. So of the various different ways that you can do damage, they build up different amounts of like poise break, which is essentially a secret hidden meter they ha enemies have that fills up, and when it becomes full, they they drop, and you can get a, a special extra damage hit on them. On um, on ordinary enemies, that's just marked as like hit, you know, normal normal hit locations. Uh, it's not marked at all. But on bosses, you get a nice glowing weak spot. Um, which is a little bit of the Sekiro influence, I think. I say influence as, it's, as, if it's, as if it's not the, you know, previous game they made. <laughs> oh shit, there's my other backup gone. It's just you and me now. That was a bad time to heal. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna focus now. The other upside to staggering an enemy is that you can use that time to heal as well without it doing that and killing you. I might try a different summon. These guys are good because I think they have holy resistance and they are heavily defensive, which is what you want for guys to take aggro for you, really. Uh, the helper things are summons of which I have a frankly oh I'm not using sorcery in this fight so I shouldn't be using sorcery talismans anyway so let's change that out let's get extra stamina and let's get uh what else have we got I don't need stat boosts I I don't know how much holy damage it does I don't need non-physical damage improvement oh jump attacks would definitely help Spamming jump attacks when you have the chance is one, as far as I can tell, of the better ways of staggering bosses. Um, it seems to happen almost too easily against really big bosses. It would be more effective if I had a nice big two-hander weapon. I'm actually thinking about putting a putting a bunch of stats stat points into strength, just so I can wield some of the larger weapons. There is a intelligence magic scaling greatsword, which is the Troll Knight's greatsword that I would quite like to use, which I need... You know, better magic, uh, better strength to be able to to lift. I could try putting armor on as well, but min maxing that is a huge pain and seems to make no difference in how likely I am to get killed in one hit. So, right, which of my which of my cool Pokemon shall I shall I pick now? Um. Oh, I don't have the Darkmoon Greatsword though, which I assume is here somewhere, but where I don't know. This guy's done me pretty good in the past, but I think he... I do have Luthel the Headless. Yeah, this guy. I haven't upgraded it as much, though, as some of the other ones. Um, I've used the Ancestral Follower against dragons a lot. Caden Soul Sword is great against things that stagger easily. Fanged Imp I use a lot for the, the blood damage. Um, what I'm worried about is how much AoE damage this this target, this, this threat does. AoE tends to, to wipe out spirits pretty easily. Which is actually why I'm not using the, uh, the the two skeletons that I have. The two skeletons are extremely great, but they have the downside of... Actually, if I remove that, I'll have an easier time switching things. Uh, but yeah, so there's, there's two skeletons uh, that you can summon, and they retain the benefit of uh, skeletons. Namely, the, the ability to... Uh, come back after being destroyed. However, anything with sufficient amounts of... Oh, hey, this actually is pretty weak to magic, huh? Maybe I should... Okay, I might... Maybe I should go back to my old sorcerer tactic, which I haven't done for a while, which is to fight a boss by summoning a minion and then just pelting it with uh, big wizard blasts. Also... There is a very sneaky and very tedious cheese tactic that you can use on almost any of the bosses that are present in the open world. Which is... 
that you can uh, if you get out of their like aggro radius far enough they will reset back to their starting position or more accurately if you kite them out of their sort of designated game zone they will uh, literally just vanish and reset back to their starting position which means that you can run away far enough to get your um, get your healing done by doing that or you can instead use that as an opportunity to get free hits in on them. Yeah, see there's one of my imps down already. I think this thing has I think this is second phase. I think it does two two phases. Oh no, we're all right. But yeah, the skeletons were incredibly good for bosses I was struggling with for quite a while because they um have the incredibly useful ability to come back to life after they're killed. And the AI generally doesn't destroy the bones, which means that they can't, which would stop them from coming back. Players obviously destroy the bones as soon as they knock a, knock a skeleton down now, because that's just how you... You see what I mean about the long wind-ups? These guys are way less of a problem than some of, some of the others, but st it's still noticeable. Actually, now that I think about it, these have a really similar moveset to the um, Girodatus in Monster Hunter. Let me go, let me go, let me go. Don't you kill me. I, I think I'm dead. <sighs> Got pretty close that time. Oh, really? I kind of lost the I kind of lost the skill of it and, and started missing a lot there. <laughs> The Mimic Tear. Interesting. I don't know what that is. Also, yeah, like I said, thank you for the rolls, but I feel like I did, in fact, uh, beef it. Uh, I kind of lost the confidence. That's that's the key for me. When I started being able to dodge the things in this, I... Um, uh, when I started being able to actually do sensible dodges, it was like this moment of, aha! I just have to wait until the last possible moment. And it's just, there's just not an instinct for it the same way there is in the Souls games, because in the Souls games, the, you know, the, the wind up being smaller and the attack being longer usually means that if you wait, you know, if you do it halfway through the wind up, you're probably okay. That and the fact that you can, um, can't dodge as far. Uh, should we try Lutel? Yeah, I have, um, I have actually, in fact, actually, the reason I played Monster Hunter World as much as I did was because I had heard that it was Dark Souls bosses the game. Um, and it kind of was, and I really enjoyed it, and I wish I had played it more now. But, all of that aside, it is really funny to me whenever I notice that a particular thing I'm fighting in this game is a- oh, that's too far away, yeah. Is a particular from soft boss that I'm familiar with that's been brought back again. Of which there are several in this. I had a, I had a very amusing moment the first time I fought the normal guardians of, of, of uh, trees, which are normally not as horrible as these ones. And I was like, oh, you're a stray demon. I remember you. We went to Dark Souls together. That said, I do think it has a problem with um, indistinguishable animations. There are a lot of creatures that have attacks that look basically the same. Um, it's hard to tell whether this guy is about to do that thing that he just did, or launch into the other tailspin that he has. See, I've played, what was it, like 80 hours of this game now and I have not found a single Mimic. I know there has to be one. It's a FromSoft game. Somewhere there will be a Mimic. But it's driving me mental. I haven't found one yet. I 
I found I found trapped chests, and yet I still have not found Mimic. They're underground. Do you mean in Nokron, the Eternal City, which I have not yet been to because I haven't beaten Radan, not for lack of trying? Actually, that summon did seem to survive pretty reasonably, so let's try this again. Ah, okay. Well, I'm a bit disappointed now. <laughs> I realise the irony of saying that, but like, I there was there was there was sort of a pleasant tension to not knowing whether there was going to be a mimic at some point. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Fun fact: when this thing's fully charged, if you're on foot, you can't move. If you are on horseback, you can still move a little bit. Well, sorcery strategy's out. I'll probably give this a couple more tries, and if I don't manage it, I'll come back to it later. Not because I... Not because I... I think I probably would keep going until I got this one cracked uh, if I was playing by myself, but, you know. Too many more tries and it'll turn into bad radio. Alright, focus time. I don't know where the Erd Tree Gazing Hill is. Um, also, I, as I said, I haven't really done any summons. Literally at all. I think the one boss I summoned someone to help me with. Um, every other time, there's either been no summon signs around, or I have simply not needed uh, assistance. I don't know if it has the Dark Souls thing of um, bosses gaining extra hit points if you summon them. But I will admit fear with regards to that. Especially since there have been some real excessive hit point tank bosses. There was one I fought a while back which just absolutely, it genuinely, when I decided to cheese it, I it genuinely took me 20 minutes to half an hour of, of hitting it from a position where it couldn't hit back. Yeah, it's endearing to see Souls bosses coming back and their movesets showing up again, especially when they show up on something that doesn't look like the thing I was expecting it to be. However, it's a bit weird to see something with such a familiar moveset from a different game. Oh hey, it didn't kill me that time. For a second there, I thought I went off the cliff. Which would not be the first time. Oh, and that was a waste. Fun fact, there are a lot of attacks in this game with low hitboxes, which take advantage of the new jumping ability. And you can actually jump over a lot of attacks rather than dodge them. Yeah, I dodged too early then again. They just... They're really rough with the full starts. Well, maybe I'm just bad at this. I think we can all agree it was probably a fluke that I did good rolling earlier. It does always feel like cheating when uh, a boss can can kill you when you're lying on the ground because there's a really long window where no inputs will make you get up faster. You just lie there and wait to see what happens. Um, 
which I've always hated in Souls, but in Souls, usually attacks will pass through you during that animation, and in uh, Elden Ring, there are a lot of attacks which can still hit you. You know, if you have the capacity to evade it and simply fail to achieve that, then that's on you. If you are not granted the capacity to try and avoid an attack, it feels like bullshit when it kills you. I should not have gone for the extra hit. Also, fun fact, when you get on or off your horse, you get iframes. Did not know that until... Oh, okay, so that's like a full double 360 degree sweep. Interesting. So that means that it has one tail spin that goes all the way around in a circle, and one that goes twice around in a circle. So you have to dodge roll twice, and the animations look exactly the same. These gigantic rolling screen filling attacks are actually probably the least dangerous ones, because they really whiff really easily. I fear more when fighting a boss than the shink noise of my ally being murdered. Oh, here we go again. Goddamn spin always gets me. Disastrously lured in. Yeah, I'm gonna quit on this one for now. I'll come back to it later. I could summon you, but I, I don't know how to selectively summon a, a specific human person. Oh, wait, you, okay, you specifically are my good buddy. Well, uh, it's here, so... So you can't just summon someone in from miles away. Anyway, Alice seems to want me to keep trying, so I guess I'll keep trying. Because, you know, perseverance is what Dark Souls is all about. But this isn't Dark Souls, this is Elden Ring, and Elden Ring is all about perseverance up until the point you lose your temper, at which point you come back later. You know, if you keep trying past the point where you start to get angry, that becomes perseverance. I think you can hold this for as long as you like without it uh, costing more mana. What about how far I can kite it? If I go far enough, it will just fade out. Okay, hmm. But, hmm. 
Well, this is a to-do, isn't it? <laughs> uh, hmm. You got this right, Lutel. You don't need my assistance. Maybe the boss will fall off the edge. That'd be... That'd be a turnip for the books. Oh, now that's hardly fair. The weak spot was below the level of the ground. I think that if you successfully stance break one of these things and get the weak spot available and then fail to hit it in the weak spot, it should just give you a free hit. Oh, hey, okay, interesting. So I got far enough away that it despawned. Now it should retain its damage. Every other boss that that's happened to has retained its damage level. Can I summon Lutel again? Please, I can't face it alone. This isn't fair. Is it coming this way? I can't even tell. Yep, yep, it's coming this way. That's a nasty trick. That's twice now it's lured me in looking like it was going to do a different attack. Oh, it was in the fire! <laughs> Leaden hard tier, cerulean hidden tier. Right, so. Oh, god damn it. So yeah, I'm using a I'm using a Nintendo controller plugged into my PC, which uh, I can't think in words and speak in words at the same time, so I have to be quiet whenever I'm doing this sort of thing. I had a bunch of uh, really good messages that people liked. I was constantly getting healed by people rating my messages. There we go. So yeah, if you're if you're if you're in trouble with this boss, get him stuck in the fire. It won't do much damage, but it will get the last hit and steal all the glory from you. Oh, is there? Maybe that's why my old- I thought messages just timed out after a while and that's why my old messages were disappearing. Maybe it's just that it was that there were, I was putting down too many messages. Okay. I was too chatty. Which, as we all know, is something that can't possibly happen in real life. Especially not while I'm on streams. You know me. I'm quiet all of the time and I'm never talking at all. Especially not when there's nothing important happening. So why are you dickheads here? You quite finished? Got that tantrum out of your systems? Jolly good. It's 
So Mel Gelmet is proving kind of interesting um, for a few different reasons. The main one of which is that it seems to feature every faction in the game attacking Mount Gelmir at the same time. Why they are doing that, I have no idea. And, um... I don't really know at all yet. But the... that That is one of the flaws that I've mentioned previously about this way this game tells its story as opposed to the way the Souls games tell their stories. There is less of this idea of an elaborate, carefully designed web of information which you slowly explore and interpret and figure things out from there is more just a kind of like a whole bunch of stuff that happened and it doesn't really feel like a lot of it relates to anything else there isn't the same sense of thinking huh that's weird why is this person here why is this kind of person here when that kind of person is normally somewhere else oh i forgot about the spiders I would like to leave. I do not wish to deal with the spider hands. Share zone evaded. But yeah, so despite that, there are a lot of fun things to learn as we go along. So, for example, the Elden Ring almost certainly was literally a physical ring floating in the sky with a large physical stone temple built around it, which also flo floated in the sky. That guy's going to kick my ass. That looks like something that's going to fight me. Hey, are we, are we cool? You don't look like we're, you don't look like we're cool. He's, no, we're not cool. That's bad. So that yellow stuff is the Flames of Madness, which is different to Ordinary Fire, which is also an element which is worshipped. There are people who worship fire, and there are also people who worship madness, and with it, uh, the Flame of Chaos. Because FromSoft really love to reuse their concepts as well. Yowza. Well, I'm out of hit points. Where was even the nearest- oops. It looks like this guy has just the standard giant moveset, but with that, um... I think they're stone trolls, actually. Giants are something else. But yeah, the Elden Ring is actually kind of like a... Kind of like a... What is it called? Like an Anderson Ring? or No, a, a something or other ring. The... The science fictional mega structures that are that are a giant ring built around a sun to harvest. You know, like a, like a single strip of a Dyson Sphere. Anyway, so there was this floating this floating ring, and something, possibly the killing of a demigod, not sure, possibly that was just a hap something that happened at the same time, resulted in that ring shattering. The ring shattering uh, broke the lands between, but the lands between by, kind of implicitly, are not, you know, they're, they are, like all FromSoft games take place in, a liminal dream space between, you know, reality and fantasy. So the lands between are kind of like the homes of the gods up in up somewhere far away and different and there is an outside to it because we know the tarnished were banished to said external zone and uh came back i guess to solve problems which is usually how from sort of protagonists end up where they are I'm just going to clear these things out the easy way, because that's what this spell is for. And then fight this guy properly. Assuming he gives me the chance. The giants are pretty... Oh, trolls. The stone digger trolls are relatively easy to... Uh, dodge, I was going to say. Let's put the lie to that. They're relatively easy to um, stagger and get the... Stagger bonus on, assuming you are not, in fact, backstabbed by... Bullshit Pinocchio! There is something genuinely unpleasant about the, the madness flames. There is a kind of, like, a vomitous aspect to them. They do just seem really fucking unpleasant. Oh god, it's still alive. <laughs> Ain't no more, though.
But yeah, I tend to over rely on jump attacks to get these uh, stagger stagger bonuses. But yeah, in terms of this, hmm, there's quite a lot of factions going around. So like, there's the there's the tarnished, obviously, who are a band of extra dimensional heroes from across time and space. I guess you could call it who may be from the Lands Between, or maybe from the rest of the world, who have been called back here to deal with cosmic problems, just like every FromSoft protagonist is. Um, and as a part of that, you learn about all of these other groups. So there are, there is uh, the Golden Order, which may be a specific group of people who are called the Golden Order, or may refer to the proper ordering of reality, the proper order in which things should happen. Uh, you know, the sort of platonic natural order of things. Um, and then in addition to that, you've also got something like eight specific demigods who are the descendants or inheritors of each one part of the runes of the Elden Ring. Whether they were demigods before they seized those runes, or whether they were demigods before the shattering of the Elden Ring, I have no idea currently. Um, and so then each of those has kind of like a kingdom in this zone. Limgrave is ruled by uh, Godric the Golden, who is an ancient descendant, or Godric the Grafted rather, who is the descendant of Godwin the Golden, who was a real demigod, and then it's kind of like a diluted lineage at this point. Caelid has uh, uh, Radan, who fought the stars in the sky, which we'll get to in a minute. Limgrave is ruled by uh, Renala, who is the queen of sorcery and the sort of the, the demigoddess of sorcery. sorcery. But um, so this is kind of like a, a divine world split up between the gods, but it, it also seems to have been conquered at some point by something from the Erd Tree. The Erd Tree is referred to as the source of all life, but so is the Crucible. The Crucible is presumably a more primordial understanding of the universe and so there's these kind of competing cosmologies but then in addition to that it mentions like things like specific royal houses like the royal house of of, um, of Caria and Renala is from the royal house of Caria or Caria I'm being people are gesturing at me I'm not sure what they're trying to tell me so um yeah, but then there's lots of weird little details, like the Cuckoo Knights, are, are their armour will tell you that they are the knights sworn to the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, which is the, the big centre of sorcerous learning in this world. But the other kinds of sorceries come from Caria, or Caria, or Caria, and... Um, there's a conflict between the two. But Renala was of the Carrion royal family. She was their, like... She was the the, the queen of, of that royalty. And she's currently holed up in the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. But the Cuckoo Knights are specifically referred to as hunting the Carrion royal dynasty, or having, or explicitly being at war with the, the Carrion royal dynasty. So how do these things interrelate? And how do they... How do they fit into that framework? Similarly, now that I'm starting to explore the Altus Plateau, which is the region directly beneath the Erd Tree, which is one of these, you know, universal linchpins, I'm finding hints that um, there was a great conquering at some point, and so and these this whole region, the lands between, once belonged to giants who were cast out by humanity, which may or may not have come from the tree. And this is just scratching the surface. There's a lot of other stuff going on here, like the last of the fire giants were up in Mount Gelmir. Is there a connection between the fire giants and the various flaming giants I've fought? Dunno, because I haven't seen any of them in this area, I've, in you know where they're apparently from. I've seen them in other places. Similarly, what's the deal with the stone digger trolls? You find them literally chained up as beasts of burden in some places. In other places, you find them as... I can't read that. Excuse me. I've just been handed a note which reads, reads Mausoleum at Halicarnassus in Caria in real life. So, Caria is presumably a reference to the real life uh, location uh, of the Mausoleum of Halicarnassus, 
which, as we all know, was a pre-Hellenic Greek or proto-Hellenic Greek or something or other. I'm getting a hand-waving gesture. You know, ancient, ancient classical civilization type famous location. I think it was one of the, the seven wonders of the world, if I remember correctly. Anyway, so there was also some kind of war that's happened subsequently, subsequent to the breaking of the ring, which is presumably why everyone is at war currently. In all of these places, there are signs of battles currently going on. There are sieges underway that you that you interrupt that are happening. What's the deal with those? Don't know that either. Everyone seems to be fighting everyone else at all times. Um, and on, in, on top of that, nobody can die anymore. The kind of... Um, every Souls game kind of has an excuse for why nobody dies anymore. Although it's very rarely everyone in the entire world. But something... Possibly the breaking of the ring itself has resulted in um, everyone in the world no longer being able to die, which is why they've all gone completely fucking insane and why they are constantly attacking each other and murdering each other. But yeah, so what's the deal with the stone digger trolls? I've never met a free one. I've met ones who are chained up as beasts of burden. I've met ones who have been eviscerated as part of the grafting craze that caught on. Um, I've met one that talks to me and is a servant of... Um, Servant of a character whose deal I don't really know what is up with right now, who may be uh, a part of a plot line that is that is sort of the alternative main plot because FromSoft games usually have a couple of alternative. I see how it is. I can't believe I fell for that. <laughs> I mean, sure, you could say that, and it's not untrue, but also. I do have the right, though. I literally have an invitation to this place. So I think these guys might be obsessed with blood. But yeah, so in addition to those various different, like, um, cosmic orders going on, there's also various different kinds of curse going on. There's, there's, you know, the tarnished follow the two fingers, which I assumed would be two individual people and was surprised to discover refers to two actual physical fingers which wiggle endlessly, and have an interpreter who interprets the wiggling as uh, words that the Tarnished should obey. And this is the will of the Golden Order, which ties in some way to Divine Grace, which ties in some way to the Elden Ring and the Erd Tree in a complicated fashion that I have not yet figured out. But yeah, on top of all of that, there's various different curses going on, such as... Um, the Misbegotten, who are people who got too close to the Crucible, which is the original primordial source of all life, which is not the same thing as the original primordial source of all life that is the Erd Tree. Um, and the Omen, who are people who are sprouting beast-like features. Incidentally, there is a more peaceable faction of the Omen people who um, are the ancestral followers who believe that sprouting bestial bits is them getting closer to primal nature and will ultimately result them in becoming some kind of ancestor spirit. I killed their god. I didn't really mean to. Um, I hope that doesn't have repercussions later. In addition to those, there is the, the madness, which is tied in some way to the three fingers, which I have never met, and almost nobody has ever said anything about, but pre is presumably the rest of the hand of whatever the two fingers came from. Whose hand is it? I don't know. There's a there's a primordial or more important higher level god. You know, the, the gods in this game are all called demigods. There is There are a couple of entities that are called gods, one of which is uh, Marika, I think who is depicted with a lot of crucifixion imagery and may or may not be crucified. I don't know. I haven't found her yet. Somewhere here there's a a thing relevant to what I'm saying. Here we go, Marika. The Queen Marika, who is one of the only things actually called a, a, a god rather than a demigod. What's her deal? Don't know. How does she relate to any of the rest of this? Also don't know. Um, and then in addition to all of that, there's a bunch of other things I haven't mentioned. And then there's sorcery, which is this kind of a, pri a primal power relating to glintstones, which is sort of alien. Blue glintstones come from deep within the earth and uh, have some connection to a mysterious group of entities called the Crystallians, which may be sentient glintstones themselves. From the stars, there fall various meteorite beasts, which we tried to fight earlier and which were really tough. Those things are, you know, 
the sky, literally the stars falling from the sky as alien, as not alien invaders, like not in a science fictional sense, but in a kind of like apocalyptic, the stars are falling sort of sense. Uh, you know, they're not giant balls of gas. They are giant sentient monsters from outer space. Those may or may not be related to the Alabaster Lords and the Onyx Lords, who are both made of stone, much like the creatures that fell from the sky, and also are um, these ancient entities which are said to have been descended from things that fell from the stars. They all have purple magic, which also comes from glintstones, but glintstone magic is blue. So it is not unreasonable to assume that, you know, planetary bodies or whatever each have their own kind of sorcery. <laughs> Um, which is a really amusingly literal interpretation of the idea of astrology. Uh, so, you know, the Earth, whatever whatever this planet the game takes place on is called, has, you know, this blue sorcerous core somewhere deep down. Um, and here we have Volcano Manor, which is, of course, named like a Zelda destination. Anyway, I could keep going in that vein for like another 15 minutes, but I'm going to stop now because A, my voice is getting sore, and B, like, there's just so much more, like... There's so many more layers of all of this stuff. And unlike a Souls game where it is all cogs in an incredibly finely tuned machine, it sort of just feels like a whole bunch of different stuff happening at the same time. Anyway, I've been seeing these guys on a load screen since I started playing the game, so I'm cool. I'm pleased to finally find out what the deal is. So it sounds like the fingers are in some way connected to the tree in a positive way. And grace is the sort of divine will that flows from the tree through the fingers, I guess. And these guys are oppositional to that in some way. And they are super spooky looking. But your ultimate objective in a FromSoft game usually betrays you in some way. So I have always been suspicious of the Golden Order and the Erd Tree and the Tarnish to begin with. But I'm partway through a quest line that might be another a third option with regards to these. So I mean, I'm going to join just to see what happens. Now you belong to the volcano man, family. The drawing room lies down the hall. Make yourself comfortable. I really hope that choosing this doesn't actually lock anything else off because I did want to go back and finish the uh, the Rani plotline, which, as I said, I suspect may be a whole a whole nother thing, a whole nother path. That's. Uh, in uh, closely tied with sorcery and something to do with getting the stars back in the sky because I didn't notice this until a character said something about returning the stars to the sky but the, the night sky has no stars in it it's literally true there's literally no stars in the night sky so I'm supposed to go fight General Radan which I might do in a minute actually I might just zip back across the map and go see oh hey a dead guy That's snail, baby. The volcano mana introduces me to PvP. It's... I didn't get here until 80 hours into the game, are you kidding? I've got lots of PvP items, I've just never used them because I don't PvP much in Souls games. I've, um, I've done a lot of uh, defensive, for lack of a better term, PvP in... Um, Dark Souls games generally. I'm not great at it. I was I was alright in Dark Souls 3 to the point where I actually did willingly engage with PvP. See, the real reason no one likes to invite the Tarnished in is because they immediately start smashing everything you own. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Which I assume is this. Hey, you gave me an invitation, but these people didn't seem to... This woman is always at a 45 degree angle, and I don't yet know why. Hello again. Brave tarnished. It is a shame that I did not beckon you here with my own hand. But I am pleased that we need to... 
did I break this? Did I break this quest line in some way? Because I definitely have an invitation that she gave me. So that doesn't quite make sense. I'm not sure. There are there are some like bugged quest lines in this. There are some like busted busted ways of it working. Do I know you? I hope you understand the weight of my words. Then you must leave immediately. Those with weak stomachs have no place here. Rude. I have an invitation. In fact, where the hell is my invitation? I literally... Yeah, see? Literally, I have an invitation. Oh, right. Okay, I didn't... I don't think I ever found that. Uh, the Earth Tree Gazing Hill Grace. Huh, okay. Actually, I do think that the tendency of this game to just sort of teleport you around is also a flaw. One of the really lovely things about the Souls games um, is how carefully positioned everything is and how carefully designed and how you go from one place to another and then it's a genuine surprise that something is where it is. Um... And it has all these wonderfully designed sight lines. Whereas I got a teleporter at one point that teleported me from somewhere around here to literally like the divine capital, which is implicitly endgamey, or at least equivalent to sort of Anor Londo in Souls. And it teleported me over there, and then that just felt like a huge spoiler. I didn't want to know the things I inferred from being teleported over there. Similarly, I found a teleporter somewhere around here that just teleported me straight to the gates of Rhea Lucaria, which was a bit, also a bit disappointing. It's like, or it might even have been back all the way in, in Lindgrave. Oh, hey, what's that? Volcano Manor Request, Istvan. Anyway, I think that's one of the weaknesses of the pivot to open world. I And I don't think this game being open world, I don't think it suits the Souls formula. I don't think it brings anything new or beneficial to the table. And I think it weakens some of the things that were great about um, FromSoft's previous games. Um, it really feels like something done because it's the industry standard rather than because they thought it would enhance the kind of game they already made. Oh, you should have done his quest line then. This guy's going to kill me at some point, or at least try to. Mind you, very few red invader spirits, the NPC invaders, have actually successfully killed me. That was a lot of waffle. I always resented these hands. Their pale complexion. A far cry from any warrior. The shame of House Hoslow. But that won't be the case for long. I used to know someone who lives in Houndslow. Once I've set out on the path of champions, the tale of House Hoslow is told in blood after all. So as soon as I saw this guy in uh, the the hub location of the game, I was like, he's going to turn out, he's, he looks super like a vampire. He's going to be involved in a vampire mansion quest line at some point. And then I was very surprised later on to discover that there was a vampire mansion and it does appear to have a vampire mansion quest line. So, um, weird. But yeah, so he's in the hold, and if you talk to him, he asks you to help him find his missing servant girl, and then somewhere around here, you can find him standing over her dead corpse, as opposed to her, her living corpse, and he's like, oh no, I didn't get her in time, she's been killed. How tragic. Maybe he killed her? Maybe he didn't? I don't know. Did you read the letter that is the task? You will be compensated if you are loath to hunt 
But you must leave this house. This is a war. We have no place for the meat. I want to talk to this guy. The letter describes the task of the Ruby Compact. Because that is a Crucible Knight, and I've fought a few of those so far, and apparently what I can tell about them is that they serve... Yeah, actually, he does- he does- he did sound like Igon a little bit, but Irina's dead. Uh, I haven't found any way to save her. But, um... I'm running out of steam a little bit as my mouth gets sore. But yeah, so actually, no, they told me they have a task they want me to do. And that task is probably kill a guy. Go hunt Old Knight Eastvan. To be found in Limdgrave with a red mark on the map. Yep, fair enough. So this is the, the PvP group. They seem to be positioned as super duper evil. Like... Presumably the corpses of all the nobles hear him. Oh, hi. What's up? Nice, uh, nice wheel. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, that guy's got a weapon from, like... It's a very bloodborne -y weapon. But, um... I wonder if I'm supposed to assume that these guys uh, just kind of showed up and murdered everybody in the manor. Every every approach to this place is absolutely heaped with like hundreds of dead corpses and knights and battlefield stuff. There is an active battle going on for people to try and conquer the approach to this destination, and I don't know why. It's the only time I've seen multiple factions fighting each other. Every other time I've seen um, the results of battles lying around, it's been very much you know, these guys fended off an assault and now they're regrouping, and it's kind of supposed to imply the ongoing battles between all these people. Oh, okay. But um, this area is the first time I've actually seen multiple factions. There's, there's uh, people infected with the madness of the Three Fingers, there's um, Grafted Scions from Godric the Golden's group of people, there's tons and tons of soldiers from the capital, there's sorcerers from Raya Lucaria, there's even demi-humans running around who seem to have some allegiance with the sorcerers from Raya Lucaria. And I don't know why they're all here, and I don't know why they're trying to conquer this place. Presumably, if the inhabitants of this manor house are oppositional to the Golden Order, I always forget the timing on that. Then they are, uh, you know, all of the adherents of the Golden Order are together marching on them. But the adherents of the Golden Order have been, you know, going to war with each other for ages at this point. The war-torn ruin of the world is because the various different um, groups who are members of the Golden Order are fighting each other. So what's the deal with that? Hashtag uh, Seinfeld voice or whatever. But I suppose that would make a reasonable explanation for why there are so many different groups attacking this place. Why the madness would be here, I don't know. But all of the rest of them have a reasonable reason to be here, even though, as far as I know, Rhea Lucaria doesn't really give a shit about the Golden Order or about the Erd Tree. They only care about the stars. Which is, of course, why they are trying to kill General Rodan. Or you would think that they would be, but no. Rani is trying to kill General Rodan and just dispatched me to do so. Um, but then Rani is a kind of like a third party as well to all of this. Who doesn't really seem to have a stake in the Golden Order or in the Erd Tree or in any of this stuff, but really just wants... Really just wants the stars to come back for sorcery reasons. Oh hey, I should probably be... Just doing sorcerer things to this guy. Nobody likes getting hit with this. Generally pretty good for poise breaking. Not that this guy seems to have much of a... Uh oh. Yeah, I don't know what Blythe's deal with deal is. Apparently, because I because I missed an appointment with him, he skipped to the next stage of his quest, 
which actually resulted in him completing a dungeon for me. Which I didn't realise until I looked it up on the wiki, because I was confused about <laughs> about what was up. But um, when I reached the uh, the general uh, the 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 mini the dungeon at which you fight General Radan at the end, what I found was that everything there was already dead, apart from a couple of big monsters and a handful of nobles hiding in a cupboard. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you get animation out of uh, getting backstabbed. Good to know. Wait, why am I hurt? I don't remember taking damage. This is easier when I'm not talking. Who knew? Giza's wheel. Also, it's a bit rich for people to be like, oh, the Volcano Manor, they're so evil, they invade and kill other people. The Order of the Tarnished, I was literally told, we have no rules, we have no, uh, we have no camaraderie between our members, you can prey upon each other as you like. That is what the guy in charge told me when I showed up. So I don't really see how these guys are any different. Oh, 70 blood loss build up. I think that's the highest I've seen so far. Great iron wheel lined with flesh flaying blades, device of torture used by Inquisitor Giza. As the wheel spins, it causes severe pain and, severe pain and blood loss. The design was adopted for use as an iconic weapon wielded by iron virgins. It took me ages to realise what the Iron Virgins were, incidentally. I saw that I saw them mentioned over and over and over again. It turns out that they're animated Iron Maidens with some kind of horrible tentacly thing inside. I think that they were constructed by Raya Lucaria, much like the marionette soldiers. But who really knows? Also, judging from how huge this place is on the outside, I thought there would be a lot more interior to explore. Maybe you only get to see some more of this place if you... Uh, Expand their plotline. Certainly there's this door that I don't know what's behind. Oh, hello. Do I know you? Actually, that's a thought. Another one of the flaws with Elden Ring is that, much like Souls, its story is told through tiny, tiny little scraps of information that you gather. And if you're like me, you like to hoard those bits of information in the back of your mind while you're playing through the game and then sort of interpret them wildly as you go until understandings blossom, like, uh, beautifully in your brain. The flaw with that in uh, this game is that I've explored two-thirds of the world map I'm 80 hours into this game, and it's still only telling me little scraps of information. It takes me normally, like, a new FromSoft game normally takes me, like, 40 to 50 hours to complete. I, I am just forgetting everything. By the time it comes up again, I have, n I have completely forgotten things I heard ages ago. Such as, for example, that the manor of Mount Gelmir was um, overseen by someone called Prayer to Rikard. Someone told me that about... 40 hours ago, and I'm not exaggerating, and that was the last thing I heard about Prayer to Rikard. And here I am, getting another mention of him. And it's been 40 hours. How am I supposed to remember that? 
Like, I'm all for keeping notes on, like, you know, oh, you met this NPC here, or whatever. That makes perfect sense to me, that's fine, you know, I used to play... I used to play uh, computer RPGs that required that kind of thing, but I wasn't required to keep track of every single name that's ever mentioned, and whether or not it's relevant to something. snailed me. But yeah, so, um, what was his name? Rykard or something. He was supposed to be in charge of this place and he's supposed to be like a, a horrible, horribly cruel, iron-fisted ruler, I guess? And a very strict... Um, whatever the word is for like a, a strictly religious person who puts people to the sword, you know, a, a zealot. But a zealot in whose cosmology, I don't know. <laughs> and I got here and he wasn't around and I've forgotten that he existed. Well, apparently I should try a ranged battle and a surprise- oh, it's one of those things. I have, uh, they're not that hard to dodge. I've fought a few of these in the past. But I do love to do this. Kapow. And now, having trimmed you down a little bit, I'll fight fair. Ah, dip. I was really proud of myself for how well I was dodging there. Didn't quite last long enough, though. I think I will continue to see what's in this mysterious underground bit of the Volcano Manor, which... Like, it's huge, the manor. It's this whole area. There must be more to it to to see. But there's only one closed door i found so far, other than this secret passage. See, it wouldn't bother me as much if they just did the thing that, like, a lot of open world games do, and just gave you, a, like, a, a list of bits of information you've uncovered. Like, obviously I can always check back through my inventory because tons of the information in these games is given through item descriptions, you know? Like, oh look, the inscrutable Crystallians have one clear purpose to safeguard their crystals. One theory posits that they yearn for the return of their creator who will carve for them new brethren. Okay, cool. So I can use that to remind myself of what their deal is. But I don't have that for words people have told me, which, that was the wrong spell. Uh, covers a lot of information that I need. I would I never normally look stuff up on the wiki until I've completed uh, a FromSoft game. This is the first time I've ever found myself looking stuff up before then. And it's just that, I, you know, I realised, oh, someone told me something 30 hours ago. That was the last time I heard of this thing. And then I look it up and it's like, oh, this character says this about that guy. And that's supposed to be a clue that you can do this other thing. And I'm like, okay, cool. But I never would have remembered that because it's been so long. Oh, hey, can he not get me through here? <laughs> Sucks to be him, I guess. Did he reset? No, there he is. Don't know what the Bloodhound Knight's deal is. Maybe perhaps I will learn a little bit from those claws he just dropped. Incidentally, I obsessively collect all items when I'm playing a FromSoft game, which is why I have... Oh, hey, I forgot to read this one. Armament designed for gladiatorial combat. Rice is above its peers as a showy specimen. The bronze snake is a poisonous breed. Resu pr pr uh, boosting resistance to poison. Neat. Yeah, exactly. I think that's one of the major flaws with adapting uh, the FromSoft 
style to an open world game. Like, it feels like making this open world was kind of just shoved into their pre-existing formula without thinking about the ways it would break that formula, which is what I've been complaining about for the past two hours. A dialogue log. Hmm. That's a term I'm familiar with from somewhere. But where? Okay, that tells me nothing about the Bloodhound Knights, which is disappointing. That's also not the spell I meant to cast. I already showed that brick who's boss, though. Hidden path? Bullshit. <laughs> I don't hate the idea of, of um, illusory walls in FromSoft games, but I do hate the fact that as soon as they come into existence, literally every wall in the game has secret path ahead written in front of it, and it's just tedious. It's just irritating. It's not a funny joke. You know what is a funny joke? This one in front of a place in Rhea Lucaria where there is a, a mounted staff on a wall that's very visibly the same model used for one of the magic staves I can use. But it's mounted too high up so you can't grab it. Also, this one is by far my most popular message, apart from one I had earlier that has since been deleted, sadly. That's just, that's not relevant to anything I'm just showing off. It was pretty cool. I found a, I found a way around to a place that I couldn't otherwise access. And I have apparently helped 20 people find out that no, you don't climb up because it's impossible to do that. You go around from the other side. Aha! Now that's what I'm talking about. That's Dark Souls, baby. What are you? Oh my god, I love him. Yes. Okay, new favorite enemy in this game. <gasps> How squiggly can you go? Very squiggly. I have never seen I have never seen a FromSoft enemy I loved as much as this one. No choice but to murder him naturally. I've never, I've never seen an extendo enemy before. Actually, that's not true. I fought someone who could extend his neck, I guess, previously. Okay, so I guess you can just find your way into the, the entire rest of the zone and you won't find it if you're not lucky with rolling into that one wall by accident like I did. I wonder if I can sneak up on him. Kapow. Oh, that's not a cliff. I thought that was a cliff. Well, I mean, it's a drop, but... What do you give me? Volcanic stone. I don't care about that. So I'm probably going to stop soon. I'm not in the mood or the position to do a, a legacy dungeon, because I think there's only like five of them in the entire game, and they're huge. So uh, I was not expecting to get into a legacy dungeon up here, but... There's a couple of other places I want to explore variously around this zone, but I was in the middle of exploring this zone when all this happened, so I'm probably going to go back and do that first and then come back here again. I've been bouncing between zones by by basically just on vibes, um, but yeah, if you do play this game yourself... Oh, the really fat snake, Yokai, it's uh, Tsushiko, I think. I, I'm almost certainly not pronouncing that right. But um, that's not actually the creature that this is modelled on. These things are modelled on, what are they called? I think slow worms, which are a particular kind of snake-like but non-snake lizard. Anyway, yeah, so I don't. I think that the way I played this game was fundamentally wrong. Um, I think that I think this game expects you to follow its critical path. It does not expect you to literally mine every location for every single thing that it has. Me doing that kind of ruined the game for a little bit for me, and for about 20 to 30 hours of my gameplay, I was like, I'm sick of this and I want to stop playing, but I can't. It's only now, at like, between hour 70 and hour 90, that I'm like, actually, I'm kind of enjoying this again. So, don't do what I did. Just follow the critical path and look at the interesting things you see on the way. Don't intentionally double check every inch of the terrain to make sure you didn't miss anything. Just, just follow your nose. 
Um, don't be like me, except in every other way. So I think, yeah, that's actually probably going to be it for today. I'm, this isn't going to be a consistent playthrough. I will prop, I probably will do a consistent playthrough of this at some point. Um, but it won't be exploring every single inch of the game world. I will probably do a new game plus playthrough and just like bounce from, you know, main plot point to main plot point and so on. Um, rather than being fucking insane like I currently am. So I will stream this again soon, and but it will be picking up wherever I happen to be in the game world at that point in time, much like I did today. So join me again for that and, you know, cheer and clap as I, as I destroy various bosses or am destroyed by them. And thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to my, my Patreon patrons. And... I mean, I always end up saying this, even though at the end of streams, there's only ever four, four people watching anyway, but go check out my YouTube channel. It's got stream archives and it's also got in-depth Let's Plays that I carefully research. So that's cool, right? Go check it out. Uh, thank you so much for watching and goodbye. My voice hurts now.